In this lecture we're going to talk about the CPI. And CPI stands for the consumer, that's the C, price, P, index. All right, CPI. Now the consumer price index is a price index, and a price index is simply a measure of the price level. Well, that begs the question, what is the price level? And the answer is, is, it's a weighted average of the prices of all goods and services. To illustrate, suppose we have two goods, good A and good B. And the price of good A is $2, and the price of good B is $3. Right? And we're going to suppose now that consumers buy these two goods, A and B, in equal quantities. So if they buy 100 units of A, they're going to buy 100 units of B. So let's figure out what our price level is here. Well, since consumers buy equal amounts, we can just find the average price. So we'll take $2, we'll add it to $3, and we'll divide it by the number of goods. We have two goods, A and B. Our average price, or our price level, is $2.50. So once again, a price index tries to measure the price level, and a price level is just a weighted average of prices. Now, one of the most common price indices is, of course, the consumer price index. So we're going to try to compute that consumer price index, and we're going to go through a step-by-step -step explanation of how that is done first thing that is done is a market basket is defined. A market basket is simply the goods and services that a typical household buys. So a typical household might buy a certain number of clothes and food and shoes and so forth and so on and books and computers and so forth and so on. And in our market basket for our example, we're going to just have a market basket with two goods, A and B, and we're going to say the typical household buys 10A and 20B. Then our second column here, we're talking about current year prices of these goods, A and B. So if the current year is 2011, then you're talking about 2011 pr prices. If the current year is 2012, you're talking about 2012 prices, and so on. So our current year prices are $2 for good A and $3 for good B. In our third column here, we're going to look at the current year expenditures on each of the two items. So on item A, 10 are purchased at $2 each, so that's $20 spent on good A. And on item B, $3 is spent on 20 units of B, so that is $60. Right? Now, we're going to go to the fourth column and look at base year prices. A base year is simply a reference year. It's a year in the past that is chosen as a point of reference or basis for comparison purposes. So uh, uh, the base year could be something like 1995 or 1997 or 1986. And let's say that in that base year, whatever specific year it happens to be, the price of A is $1 and the price of B is $2. So what are the base year expenditures on these two items? Well, $1 for 10A comes out to be $10, and $2 for 20B tends up to be $40, right? Now, let's do one other thing. Let's look at the total dollar amount spent on the market basket in the current year. In the current year, well, we know twenty dollars is spent on A and sixty dollars is spent on B, so the total dollar amount spent on the market basket in the current year is eighty dollars. What's the total dollar amount spent on the market basket in the base year? Well, we know ten dollars is spent on A and forty dollars is spent on B, so the total dollar amount is fifty dollars. All right. Now let's take these two dollar amounts, that is the eighty dollars and the fifty dollars, and use them to compute the CPI. So we're going to compute the CPI, and the way we do this is quite simple. We take the dollars spent on the market basket in the current year, and I'm going to have CY represent current year, and we divide it by the dollars spent on the market basket in the base year, BY. 
and then we're going to multiply by 100. Right? So the dollar spent on the market basket in the current year was $80. So $80 is in our numerator. And the dollar amount spent on the market basket in the base year was $50. So $50 is in, a, is in our denominator. Now, $80 divided by $50 is going to give us 1.6. And if we multiply that 1.6 times 100, we're going to get 160. So 160 is the CPI for the current year. Now the question is often uh, arises, well, what does the 160 mean if 160 is the CPI for the current year? And the answer is it really doesn't mean a whole lot unless you compare it with another CPI number. So let's, show, let's, let's suppose we have two years, and this time the CPI will be the CPI in year one. And let's say that the CPI in year one happens to be uh, 140. And let's say that the CPI in year two happens to be 170. All right. Now, we want to find out what has happened to prices between the two years one and two. Well, one thing we can say is that prices have gone up because 170 is a greater number than 140. So prices are higher in year two than they are in year one. But if we want to figure out the percentage change in prices, or specifically the percentage increase in prices, we would do the following. We'd say the percentage change in the CPI is equal to the CPI in year two, which is the later year, minus the CPI in the earlier year, which is year one, 140, all over the CPI in the earlier year, that is year one, 140, times 100. Right? And that's going to give us the percentage change in the CPI. And so if we take 30 over 140, we're going to get 0 0.214. And if we multiply that by 100, we're going to get 21.4%. In other words, we can use these two numbers here, 140 and 170, to figure out the percentage increase in prices between the two years. So let's summarize. We said that a price index, for example, the CPI, is a measurement of the price level, and that the price level is simply a weighted average of prices. CPI is a price index, and that CPI is based on not all goods and services, but the goods and services in the market basket. And the goods and services in the market basket are representative of the goods and services bought by a typical household. And we can use CPIs from different years, year one, year two, or real years like 1997 and 1998 or 2010 and 2011 to figure out the percentage change in prices. Well, let's ask a question, and that is, what is the CPI in the base year equal to? What is the CPI in the base year equal to? Well, remember the formula for figuring out the CPI in the current year. CPI in the current year was the dollars spent on the market basket in the current year divided by the dollars spent on the market basket in what year? in the base year. And then we multiplied that by 100. Well, the CPI in the base year is going to be 100. And the reason it's going to be 100 is that if we're talking about the CPI in the base year, in that case, in that case alone, the current year and the base year are the same year. Right? Let me say that again. If we're trying to figure out the CPI in the base year, then the current year and the base year are the same year. So that means that the dollar amount that goes into this numerator, uh, let's say that's going to be $100,
is going to be the same dollar amount that goes into the denominator, 100. Because again, the CY and the BY are the same. They're the same year. So whatever is in the numerator is in the denominator. So if it's 100 in the numerator, it's 100 in the denominator. It's 150 in the numerator, it's 150 in the denominator. Well, if we divide 100 by 100 or 150 by 150, we're always going to get 1. So it's going to be 1 times 100. So the CPI in the base year is going to be 100. CPI in the base year will be 100.